matter what we go through, Hashabbat, yes. God will take care of us. Come on, praise him with us. Be not dismayed, yes. whatever be time. I know God will, he'll take care of you. Makes no difference what situation you're in. Just give it to Jesus, yes. he'll take care of you. I know he I will. will take care of you. He'll take care of He'll you. Take care of he you. will. He'll take care of you. I know He'll he will. I know he I will. will take care of you. I know he will. He'll take care He'll of take you. Take Whatever the time, I know God will. He'll take care of you. Yes. Makes no difference what situation you're in. Just give it to Jesus. He'll take care of you.
with our young women coming forth with a selection, God Can.
because our comfort is knowing that he can fix it and he will fix it hallelujah the name of the lord is a strong tower hallelujah hallelujah the righteous hallelujah can run to him hallelujah and be safe hallelujah so we thank god hallelujah that he can fix it and now hallelujah we present to you our pastor suffragan bishop charles l smith let's praise the lord for our bishop Work it out. I said he can work it out. Some things are complicated, involve a lot of things, and we don't have the answer. But I thank God today. Everything that I've turned over to Jesus, he worked it out. And it came out all right. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Women's Choir. Thank you, Women's Choir. Didn't those young women sound good today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm happy to be here today. We had a wonderful program in our Sunday school today, and, and we're having some good church <coughs> in the house of the Lord this afternoon. But it's time now for the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. And we'd like for you to turn with us to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. And we're going to read two verses there, verse 24 and verse 25. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 24 and verse 25. When you have it, if you don't mind, please stand upon your feet and honor the word of the Lord, and we will read our scripture together. Whenever you're ready, say amen. Let's begin reading at verse 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. Father God, I bow before you and thank you for our scripture text for today. We pray that you'll remember, hallelujah, Zion in a special manner. Help us, Lord, to cast all of our care upon you. Help us, Lord God, to let you work it out in our lives. Please remember the unity of the church and remember the healing of the church and of those who come today who have sickness in their bodies. We pray that they will be healed. Those that are baptized in Jesus' name today, we pray that they will be healed. I pray for those that our hearts are bowed in sorrow and grief. I pray that you will strengthen them and help them in a very special manner. Please remember the families of Zion that have had death recently, hallelujah. Lord, comfort them through the power of the Holy Ghost and help them during their time of grief. I pray that you will remember those that are sick in the hospital those that are behind prison bars. I pray, O oh God, that you will bless them to come out and be good citizens of the United States of America and Cincinnati, Ohio. I pray that you will stop the violence that is in our city, that prayer will be able to reach the portals of heaven, and there will be a change in Cincinnati, Ohio. 
they will put their guns away, hallelujah, and begin to make peace with God, hallelujah, and bring peace to the city itself. Bless the words of your servant today, and whether there are many or few, I pray that your blessings will be upon us, that you will use us for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our scripture text today is going to be the two verses that we read when we were standing. And I will read them again. It said, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching. Hallelujah. Our subject for today is the importance of coming to church. Okay. Hallelujah. The importance of coming to church. Hallelujah. The writer of Hebrews is giving an exhortation to the Christian Jews. Hallelujah who are baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. And he is telling them to, number one, maintain your faithfulness to Christ. Hallelujah. And I will say that again. Maintain your faithfulness to Christ. God is faithful to you. And he expects us to be faithful to him. Hallelujah. He doesn't charge us for his faithfulness. He does not ask a certain amount of money for me to be around and do what I do for you. But he just says, serve me and walk with me and do the thing that you know is right. In my eyes. Hallelujah. And the second thing he tells them is steadfastness. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to be steadfast. I don't want you hot one time and cold another time. I don't want you to be on fire and feel like, just give me something to do, Lord, and I'll do it. Uh, and then the next time, I don't know whether I want to do that or not. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love preaching the word. But we can't be hot sometime and cold other times. But the journey that we have begun with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have to keep on keeping on. Whether things go right or whether they go wrong, our responsibility is to keep our eyes on Jesus and our eyes on our assignment that he has given unto us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't worry about what the people's doing. Don't worry about Brother X and Sister Y, what's on their mind. But Lord, help me to keep my mind upon Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever my assignment is, if it's the choir, the usher board, preaching, teaching, Sunday school, men's ministry, women's ministry, young people, 
Whatever it is, Lord, help me to be, number one, faithful to what you gave me. And number two, help me to be steadfast. Hallelujah. He was saying to them, the Christians, the Christian Jews, the Hebrews, it's no time to run for Christ. And then the Judaizers came and say, you need to keep Moses' law or you can't be saved. And now you want to stop and go back to Judaism. It's not the time to go back to Judaism. It's time to move forward in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm wondering if I could get about four witnesses on that. That's good. I think I got at least four. Hallelujah. It's time to come to church more. More, more, not less, more. Why should I come to church more? It's because God is expecting me to live up to my responsibility. God is expecting me to fill my place in the house of the Lord. I can't sing in the choir at home. I can't be an usher at home. I wonder what they doing today. Well, you know what they doing because you don't got it down so good. You know when the offerings are next and the announcements is next and the choir is next and pastor going to get up next. He's going to preach for at least 45 to 50 minutes and we'll be there till about 1.30 and then we're going to have a half hour to 45 minutes of all the call and I ain't going to get out of here until 2 o'clock. I'm preaching now. Hallelujah. But we need to come to church more. You so say, why do I need to come church more? Is because we need each other. Hallelujah. The devil tried to tell us we don't need nobody. You can stay saved by yourself at home. You can play your tapes. You can do all your praying. You can read your daily bread. But you really don't have to come to church. You can watch TV, you can watch the Reds play, you can watch the Bengals play. As long as you don't smoke, drink, or run around or commit fornication, you're okay. Hallelujah. You're a wonderful person. But when we separate ourselves from the rest of the body of Christ, we lose something. Hallelujah. Well, what do I lose? I lose the strength of my brothers and my sisters in the Lord. I miss hearing the word. I miss hearing the testimonies of God's children. I miss those words of encouragement that many times I'm told when I walk down the aisle, keep on keeping on. I'm glad to see you in the number one more time. I missed you while you was at home. I'm glad you came back. Hallelujah. The text said, consider one another to provoke unto love and good works hallelujah hallelujah consider one another now I looked at the word provoke and 
it kind of hit in my head, provoke as we see it means to make somebody really mad. I'm a preacher anyway. Hallelujah. But in this text, it means to incite somebody to do good. Hallelujah. It means to stir up the purpose for good. When I come to church, hallelujah, I need somebody to provoke me or stir me up to good. I don't want to commit bad stuff. I don't want to be absent from the house of God. I don't want to be off by myself. I want to be in the midst of the congregation because somebody is going to stir me up. You know what God did for you. You know how God brought you out. You know how God healed your body. You owe God a praise. You owe him a song. You owe him a gift of thanks for what he's already done. I not only missed you, but I missed your testimony. <laughs> and I missed your song and I missed what you do to make the service exciting. And I missed what you say that makes me think about doing good and makes me want to do good. I, I missed that. So I got to come to church more <laughs> so I can get that. Hallelujah. Uh, quiet message. But I don't mind. I learned how to preach in all kind of gears. I got creeper. I got first gear, second gear, high gear, and overdrive. Just whatever the congregation feel like. That's where we'll go. If you don't feel, you know, in second and third gear, we'll get creeper out for you. Hallelujah. Because it bothers me when I see so much absenteeism from the church. It bothers me. So why does it bother you, Elder? Because they are missing something that they could have. They're missing that inner fellowship with one another. They're missing the breaking of bread together. They're missing the giving of prayers and worship and praise with their brothers and sisters in the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. Hallelujah. Absenteeism will become prevalent in the last days. Hallelujah. Absenteeism is one of the enemies of the church. Apathy and complacency are enemies of the church because people, hallelujah, will not, hallelujah, give up a little bit of pleasure and a little bit of time away from the church to assemble themselves with the people of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I looked up the word forsaking, and, and that does not just mean I'm not here at certain times. I'm here on Sunday morning, but I don't come back Sunday night. It's not talking about that, but it means to denounce completely. 
I looked it up. I did my homework. It's not just a thing that happens occasionally, but evidently the ones that he's talking to about faithfulness and steadfastness, they had stopped being faithful and they had stopped being steadfast. Hallelujah. It's to lose that feeling that said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's losing that zeal to be in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to God's house not to see who came out and not to see all the saints again, but I'm going into the presence of the Lord. I'm going to sing my song. I'm going to shout. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to feed from the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but when we cancel service out at nighttime, it seems like the day goes so slow. You say, oh, it don't bother me. Well, yeah. God bless you. <laughs> but it bothers me when I cannot get to Sunday school and the house of the Lord. So well, why does it bother you? Because I know something good is going to happen here. And I'm going to miss it. And if I don't get the tape or if I don't get the sermon, I'm going to miss the word. There may be an exhortation that will go forth that will help me next week where I can meet the condition that is coming upon my soul and upon my spirit. I need what I can get from the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Forsaking the assembling of yourselves together not only means to desert or leave, but it means to renounce completely. And give up coming to church completely. And I wrote in my notes how sad. How sad. How sad that I don't have a feeling about my need to come to church. Hallelujah. Whatever is happening to me, Lord, shake me up. Because it is the mind of God. It is the will of God that we go to church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 100. Hallelujah. Y'all know it by heart. I don't even have to tell you what it said. Hallelujah. It said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. When you come to church, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Every time you come to church, enter into his gates 
with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I love Zion. I love its walls. I love what goes on here. Hallelujah. I love the times of refreshing that I have found in Zion Temple, First Pentecostal Church. Things that happened that I could not have got if I had stayed home. But when I came to church, I entered into his gates with thanksgiving. I came into his courts with praise. I began to be thankful unto him and bless his name. Hallelujah. When the praises went up, <laughs> I said when the praises went up, when the praises went up, the blessing came down. Hallelujah. God fills our soul with joy, with happiness, with peace, and with good things. Hallelujah. It's very important that we come to church. Hallelujah. 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 It's the place of assembly for the children of God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22 said, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of God and of the household of faith. Now I chose this scripture because the church, somebody mentioned recently that the church was not in a building, but that they assembled in a building. They came into a building but the church, the physical structure of the church was not the church. That's a quietness. And if we do come to 3771 Reading Road, we are not coming to the spiritual temple of God. We are coming to the place where the spirit-filled children of God worship God. Hallelujah. Because I take the church everywhere I go. We were talking about that this morning. The church is in us. The temple of the Lord is the spiritual house that God lives in, in us. Hallelujah. We are no more foreigners and strangers, but we are the fellow citizens of the house of God. The church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets 
And Jesus Christ himself is the cornerstone. We are all fitly joined together. We are all fitly joined together. And we grow up into a holy temple of the Lord. Hallelujah. In whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Hallelujah. The church is in us. And we are the church. But the church must come to a building that says Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church. And we must worship here with God together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In my conclusion. In my conclusion, we need to come to church more. We need to come to church more. We are truly missing something when we do not come to church. Amen. Hallelujah. The church is a spiritual temple where God comes and dwells in the midst of the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. Have a smile upon you as our prayer. We hope that we have said something. That will inspire you to come to church more. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, even as we see that day approaching. I'm concerned about the day of the Lord. I said, I'm concerned about the day of the Lord. I'm done, but I'm concerned about the day of the Lord. The writer that I was studying, he said, it's imminent. It's imminent. What that means is there's enough that has already happened for it to come to pass. There's been enough signs and wonders that have already been done for it to come to pass and we only have one chance of being saved there is no second chance after death hallelujah we must listen to the prophecies that are going forth We got to be ready. We got to be ready. If we're not ready, it's going to be a sad day for many people because they didn't take it seriously. This is a very serious time. It's a time to consider am I ready for the coming of the Lord? If you're not ready, you can get ready. I said, if you're not ready, you can get ready. We have a pool up behind me that can help to get you ready. If you repent of your sin and are buried in water in Jesus' name and believe in the saving faith of God, you can be saved today. I say you can be saved today. 
You can have the Holy Ghost. You can have the Spirit of the Lord down in your soul. The doors of salvation have not been closed yet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They have not been closed yet. Today is a day of salvation. The day you hear his voice, harden not your heart, but come to him. Is there anyone, I know there's one person that wants to be baptized today, but if there's anyone else who wants to be baptized in Jesus' name, repent of your sin. I know you can't come unless the Lord draws you, but listen to that still small voice that is talking to people while the preacher is still preaching. Hallelujah. And let that still small voice tell you about your salvation. You need to come and be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anybody that wants to come and be saved today? This young man is going to be baptized in Jesus' name today. God bless him. His name is Adam. He's already talked to me in the office. And he has a desire to be saved today. I'd like for someone to pray for him before. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? If you just want prayer, come and receive prayer today. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody else that desires prayer, won't you come? 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 Yes, thank you, Lord. Anyone else desire prayer, won't you come? is our prayer last call
We hope that you and your family enjoyed our broadcast today. I want to give you a personal invitation to come and to worship here in Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church. If you need transportation, you can call 513-861-2812. If you need prayer, you can call 513-559-9442. We hope and pray that you will come and be with us in our service. You and your family are welcome to come and worship with us here in Zion Temple. May God bless you. May he strengthen you is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.